Greetings. We're pleased to introduce the making of the Hyperdyne, an exclusive behind the scenes look at our large capacity thermal extraction device. This is the first of a two part series documenting the long development process. The Hyperdyne is now finished and it'll be available soon. Stay tuned to the end of the video for an exclusive sneak peek at the new Hyperdyne by Dynavap. Enjoy the video. Development on the bigger bowl is, is a bit on and off. I think about a year and a half, two years probably about now. Oh, we've been talking about making things bigger probably for five years. One of the biggest challenges is like, where do we, where do we land there? You know, should we make the biggest bowl we can? Uh, here's the prototype for Dynavap's latest uh, large bowl, large capacity device. Probably not. <laughs> Why make a bigger bowl? Why make a bigger boat? Why make a faster car? The feedback and the requests were gaining in terms of intensity. Well, it's pretty obvious that it's been something people have been calling for for quite a while. Well, uh, customers have been asking for a bigger bowl pretty much the entire time I've been here. There are other competitors out there that have, you know, larger capacity devices. We see a couple out there and uh, really it's just time for us to stake our claim and throw out our own option that's got the whole Dynavap spin on it. It tells us a little bit about, you know, the the market, the, the customers that are seeking, you know, a little bit more in terms of volume for their chamber. There's a good number of our users that are passing devices around to other friends, family, whatever it may be. And the standard Dynavap makes that a little difficult. You know, the bowl size is fairly small and the heat up, cool down time is fairly quick. You know, we've had direct feedback from customers too, just reaching out and saying, hey, are you working on anything, you know, to increase capacity or anything like that? Well, I think the biggest thing that customers have been asking is they want that Dynavap experience with just larger capacity. And that question has stayed a constant in those five, almost six years at that point that I've been here. My general preference is less is more. It's interesting because I'm not, I'm not one of those use cases and that's completely cool. Yes, I am definitely a advocate for the bigger bowl. I am one of those people that, even if it may sound selfish, wanting something that can pack a bigger punch without needing to reload as frequently. Listening to feedback, I think got us going in the right direction. And then came the strategy. You need more volume in the chamber, like no shit. <laughs> to hold more material, you gotta have a bigger bowl, all right? Let's really take a serious look at how do we make something bigger? And well, these things, they do take time. Um, and the unfortunate part of a larger capacity device is it's not as easy as just taking a regular Dynavap and really just scaling it up. Since we have boundary conditions with, uh, you know, the overall size of the device, like we didn't want to go above 14 millimeters because then nobody could put it in a stash that we've previously sold, things like that. This is a piece of stock that we use for making tips and mouthpiece, uh, it's 10 millimeters outside diameter. How are we going to get our temperature indicator to all work with this because it's been engineered around effectively a 10 millimeter platform and we knew that we had to get substantially larger in diameter than 10 millimeters. Great thing about a smaller capacity device is when you're heating it, it's gonna heat fairly uniformly. So how do we compromise with the larger device to get largest capacity that we want, the most thorough extraction that we're looking for um, through several cycles. You got that much more volume, more material, potentially more mass if you choose, thus potentially more heat transfer into the stem. It's like, oh, well, that's a no-no. Uh, how do you combine these things into one larger product without the cost of that product to the consumer being way above a budget that they may have in place. Re-engineering the cap is a challenge. Re-engineering the tip is a challenge. We also have this third challenge that we needed to figure out a way to overcome it. One of the goals that we had was to make a, a bigger capacity Dynavap device that was not only backwards compatible, at least mostly, but that it did meet customers' expectations as, as far as how it performed, how much material you could get in there, the amount of time it took to heat up, the amount of time it took to cool down. The goal was no less than 100% increase or double the capacity of our current tip or extraction chamber. If we can, at a minimum, get to there, 
we're making a pretty substantial evolution in what our product has been and what the category has been that we're in. But also fits along the line with our product line. So it continues to be modular with our products and really kind of fits in place quite well. When we're changing things, right, especially changing diameters, changing and re-engineering the cap, we have to understand that there's no practical way to make that cap fit other tips, at least not without modifications or some sorts of adapters. So be thoughtful about it and ideally when we do it, let's do it in such a way that we can establish a standard that we can adhere to and keep things simple and consistent. And you know, the customer communication side of that, some education just gets a little bit easier and they get to customize just a little bit more. You know, it, it sure looked to us like we had enough customers that are gonna get behind this and it's you know, worthwhile doing. It wasn't until probably 2021 where it was like, okay, we gotta get a little bit more serious about this. And this is when you know, we started the process of sourcing some of the components and really starting to sketch out what's this gonna look like. Design development on this one has taken quite a while. I mean, we started back in 2021 and we've gone through several different iterations, several different concepts of the approach that we wanted to take with something like this. How should this device look? We're so used to making things with like 10 millimeter diameters and then you upsize everything and all of a sudden it's like, everything looks weird. Beginning with some big bulky concepts, you started working on various ideas, start trimming them down, figuring, okay, how can we make this a bit more viable, testing them out. You know, initially we're thinking, let's, let's make it look different. Make it look like a Dynavap device, but not the traditional cap, you know, overhanging tip, and let's just make it really nice and sleek and uniform. And so we did experiment a little bit uh, with a tip that, you know, blended the cap. So in order for this to work, we had to substantially overhaul Number one, first and foremost, the cap. We're deciding if we want to go with new, larger snap discs for a larger cap, or can we find a way to use the original ones that are on the standard cap? The desire was to make everything backwards compatible, and that includes you know stashes and, and different packaging and things like that. And so I couldn't adhere to all of those dimensional tolerances that that you know say a tip should be 32 millimeters. Instead of adding mass to one of our existing caps by attaching or welding or whatever something onto it, maybe we should just machine a cap out of solid material and just make it thicker. And so this kind of got things moving along in terms of the development of the armored cap. Our traditional cap is a deep drawn unit that we modify, we laser here, we put in snap discs here, we crimp here. Being the first cap that we machined taught us a lot about what we have to do exactly with the stock and then namely what we have to do with the snap disc to make, sur make sure that they're secure in the assembly. There's a lot of things that you, th you think you have something done, you think you have dimensions, you think you have tolerancing until you move on to the next part. And then on top of that we had to figure out a way to engineer a new tip extraction chamber. I'd say we learned a lot of things doing the M plus, for instance, the geometry that we put into that. November, December, 2022 was probably when we finally manufactured the first viable, actually tested out proof of concept, larger capacity tips, which also then required the design and the development of a cap that would fit it. And it was really kind of during the development of the M Plus. Actually utilizes the same core as what we think is gonna be the new tip for the M. Doesn't that look funny? Today's date is December, what, 14th? What am I working on? Well, it is what specific project at this point, because there's about 17 of them, but those are a little hush-hush at the moment. The one in question, of course, is the new Dynavap M. So the main focus, as we speak at least, uh, is the tip component uh, of the new M. Well, the new M tip is a huge... Uh... And some of our kind of prototypes for the M Plus that we didn't end up going that direction because of complexity. But that's how a lot of products begin, is they begin as proof of concept that is almost always more complex than the final product. And we're not really wanting to raise the price of the M. You know, so maybe we need to like shelf this as a concept for something else. Just in the process of trying to get the M Plus going, they kind of got pushed off to the side of the shelf. And then we progressed a little bit further, you know, throughout various parts of 2023 and spring and the summer. And finally it's like, okay, we, we got to get this done. A lot of times 
we have to just do like the simple things in order to prove or disprove that we should go down any road. And one that was rather easy to do was take the M's tip and make the chamber twice as long. There was a concept that was brought forth by another member of the company. It's like, well, hey, how tough is it going to be for us to just simply make the chamber deeper? That one was a little bit weird for us, actually. I just wasn't quite sure on it. But at the same time, I love the fact when people bring ideas and suggestions and actually want to run with them. So it's like, you know what? Great. Make some. I think it worked better than people thought it would. The results are actually a bit more positive than I was expecting. They still weren't quite what I think people were looking for. Like you can't get the digger outer all the way down to the CCD. The thermal gradient got really big. And, and there's other things, but the reality is it just wasn't quite what I think that we were looking for or what I think our customers were seeking. So we quickly abandoned that idea. Introducing the Helix Titanium Tip by Dynavap. Weighing in at just over three grams, it's our lightest tip yet. For the big bowl device, we were concerned that we were going to have a lot of heat transfer problems. Come summer of last year, we've re released our Helix titanium tip, and it quickly becomes one of our best-selling titanium tip in a long, long time, maybe ever. That Helix tip, you know, it breathed really well. The heat transfer was minimum. It seemed like a logical place to kind of start this. What happens if we just simply make a bigger Helix tip? We did a few different iterations of that kind of concept. We needed to experiment with a, a mono design, so a tip, stem, mouthpiece, all in one unit. See if we can make it long enough where the heat transfer isn't a problem in your hands. You want something bigger? Okay. Kind of did it out of a joke, because we already had the program written. It's like, well, Jason, just don't cut it off. Ah, yes, the long boy tip. Very, very early prototype that George and Jason were working on, and that is just a one-part design, you know, with your CCD and with your cap. And that one made its rounds here internally. It was definitely, uh, well, it looked like a rocket, so it definitely had some interest. It works. I mean, this design reduces the heat transfer pretty substantially. That didn't go very far, and that's okay. It just, again, wasn't resonating with anybody. Well, that's the cool thing about development, because something can be a joke, but it just spawns into numerous other ideas. We're making it out of stock that's roughly the diameter of Vong. What if we just engineer it so it connects to the Vong. Today is June 15th, 2023, and we are working on the Titanium Super Helix Vong tip that will effectively be a tip and crown combination. So it replaced the tip crown and became basically the crown slash tip snapped directly on the Vong eye. And I still rather like that concept. It's like, wow, that's a fantastic idea. So now we've got a Vong eye that's the exact same length as the previous Vong eye. We've integrated the tip and the tip crown all into one unit, so we haven't actually added any parts. And anyone that has the Vong eye can then just buy the new large capacity tip and cap, twisty tip, helix tip. We're still kind of dialing all that in. We're in development, right? And if we really kind of like what we're seeing internally, we eventually move that to some of our external testers. So this is the first large capacity device tip cap combo that actually made it into our beta test group for some input. It went out to a select few testers as it was something that at the time we were kind of just eyeing out or playing with. And they said it performed just like the Dynavap that they know and love, but bigger. The Super Helix tip is probably the one of the first tips that is representative of what the of the Hyperdyne bowl is today in terms of capacity and size. People liked it, but it also didn't quite fit their expectations. And it worked, but it just didn't seem to resonate with our beta testers and even some of our people inside the company. Concerns on our end were really with that modularity aspect. The experience was there, and a lot of the testers that were using it were getting really what they were looking for out of a product like this. People liked the idea of a bigger chamber, but didn't like the fact that it only connected to the Vong. So we didn't have quite as much modularity with other devices. That one, we probably learned the most out of um, in, in, in testing. As we kind of found that those weren't a direction that we ended up wanting to take. We didn't go with the Super Helix, but when you see the Hyperdyne, you'll see a lot of like the, the style of the Helix still integrated into that. There was a decent amount of kind of gap between the last time that we did any any work on the, the Dynavap Big Bowl 
you know, project got paused a little bit. Just different products kind of come into the realm of things. You have the Woodwind, the M7. Got to get a new M out for next year. Something we'd come back to when we've got some ideas, try a few things out. Is this an approach we want to take? Yes, no. We know that we can get to the finish line here and it's right in view. Once we figure out that this works but this doesn't, how can we combine some of these prototypes with features of this one and make something better? I think some of the main takeaways from the Super Helix led us down a firm path of using titanium. This is actually the 10 millimeter taper. On the other side is the 14 millimeter taper like we've put on the Vong. Now it's just the final little tweaks have to go into it. We're seeing some green lights in the shop. Recently now we've really come to finalize the direction we'd like to take with it and put a lot more effort and priority into the bigger bowl as now it is our main priority.